A very good afternoon to everyone. I'm Shruti, your host for today. And I welcome you all as we engage in this exciting dialogue on fine art and food, a symbiosis. To take us through this fascinating relationship of food and art, today we have with us an eminent guest who has been voted as one of the top 50 Indian master chefs by the Indian Culinary Forum, Mr. Nitin Tandon. Founder and CEO of Nitin Tandon Food Styling and Consulting, he is an award-winning food stylist and educator, along with being a chef, a restaurateur, with more than 30 years of experience. Best food stylist by the Z Living Shapes Power 20, Food Photo Affair 2020-21, Exhibition Finalist, and many, many more accolades grace Mr. Nitin Tantan as he continues to create a sensation in the way food is styled with his mouth-watering and eye-catching content. We welcome you, Nitin Sir, for a dialogue with our gallerist and design journalist for almost three decades, Savita Hira. Besides heading Pradarshak, Ma'am is also the co-founder and editor of IndiaArtAndDesign.com e-magazine on art, design, and art under, and editor of IndiaArtAndDesign.com e-magazine on art, design, and architecture. Savita Ma'am, I would like to invite you to please make a beginning. Thank you, Shruti. Uh, so we are here today to talk about fine art and food. And uh, as uh, I'm sure a few of uh, you have already heard us chatting, uh, Nitin Ji, Mr. Nitin Tandan, uh, is a food stylist, restaurateur, uh, chef, and a food photographer. And as he's been saying, his life revolves around uh, making food look good. So. On one hand, we have uh, food. Food is like, it's the base of everything. Even now, I'm sure we've all had a wholesome lunch and then we, you know, got ready to come here and sit and listen to what the connection between food and art is. So as they say, food is basic to life, but food for life is one thing and food for the soul is the other. Today, we are bringing both together. So art is food for the soul. When you look at art, it gives you the kind of uh, peace, the kind of uh, uh, aesthetic uh, high that only art can give, which uh, touches you much, much beyond your stomach. It touches your soul. But you cannot live without this and you cannot live without actually eating. So you know that uh, they say that, uh, you know, once you have had a wholesome breakfast, then you're ready for the day. Until then, you're not ready for the day. So let us see where food and art meet. We have Nitinji with us and he's going to take us on a small journey which is going to tell us about the connection of food and art. Uh, Nitinji, can we begin with uh, knowing a little bit about you? Uh, what uh, kind of made you get into this career? I mean, so, how did you gravitate towards this? Um, I think so. A lot of people have genetics in their life. So I have two genetics. One is storytelling. My father was a filmmaker. Uh, he made films for Bollywood. I saw right from my young age to the time he passed, him telling stories. And then genetically, we are a food family. If you meet and you read my family group, it's called the Tandon Food Family. We may be like 50, 60 of us. So, I think so. it's marriage of both. Third, I'm Punjabi. Hospitality is in your blood, vein. So, sometimes I think so. It's God-gifted, culturally grown, genetically injected. So, that, that's been my little bit. And then I had the fortunate uh, opportunity to work at the Taj and the Obro is in my earlier part of my career. So that brought discipline to my passion. And once you work in a running kitchen, it's got lots of madness, but it has got army discipline because you take food and as one day dies, along with that, all food dies. And then you have to recreate all the magic the next day with that consistency, with that discipline, with that passion, 
and then you have to go about it day after day, year after year. So it's become so much part of you that in your dreams also it's ringing a bell. <laughs> so that's my association uh, in my right from my early years to now. So how did you get into food photography? I mean, you could have become so, just a chef or... Uh... So I was, a, I, I am a chef, not was a chef. I am a chef. I am a food stylist. I don't click pictures. I don't know how does a camera function. I only make the food look good. It's, we collaborate with other product food photographers, uh, DOPs, production houses, brands. Most of my application now is to make food look good. I, I work uh, with hotels. I ran my restaurants. Uh, I had most of my restaurants in Bombay. And also along with that, I styled food for photography. It was my passion to tell stories about food. So you understand food more deeply because if you're spending your entire day just shooting four bowls of different rice, making every rice grain look beautiful so that when it goes up in a hoarding and that hoarding is going to be 60 feet by 40 feet, every grain of rice is going to be as tall as a French fry. Right. So perfection, patience, zen, it's a very calming exercise. It's very inclusive. You know, that, that whole thing. Just imagine you only with that biryani plate, dressing up every grain of rice. You can imagine what it will take out of you. You're actually shouting in your mind. You know, when will this get over? That kind of... <laughs> So from the a little bit that I have seen of your work, uh, I see a lot of splashes, you know, your food, you, you see something splashing like that and uh, uh, or you see things uh, moving up in the air or landing on a plate and then kind of splashing. Can you explain that? I mean, how, how do you do that? Why so, do you so, do that? So once we speak about the subject and we spoke yesterday about still life, as time and uh, the limitation of our medium in which art photography grew, there was a time that you had to excite people with two dimensions, which is a still photography. And But you see life in motion. Our life is about 3D, but our medium is 2D. So that is a time when you want to excite somebody, you want to create excitement with form. You are excited about uh, chocolate jumping out of milk for the most gooey milkshake. So that's where splash photography very much up in the earlier days, even when photography was not so perfect in its digital form. But this has remained and will remain one of the strong emotions of expressing food you know the joy so it comes by a splash or it comes by that boom feeling yeah okay definitely looks looks very uh, appealing and you almost yes. want to take it and you know you want to have it that's what you're trying to <laughs> anyway get at yes. so when we are talking about uh, the still life as you mentioned so where art is concerned a lot of uh, beginnings are made with still life because a lot sure. of times, uh, you know, when uh, uh, children or artists are taught, the beginning is uh, you have a composition on the table and generally, you know, there's a plate, there's an apple, up is go, copy karo. Because you don't want to uh, uh, copy from a painting, then you is go up draw karo. Yeah. So this is where they learn, you know, the placement of the object, the, the way the color contrasts, the way the shadow is falling. So these are yeah. elements that are also... Uh, part of your uh, study as a food stylist, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so, I could evolve language to whatever form, but the Sanskrit of all language will come in its base or in its root and still life is that root because it is just that one form. Hmm. Uh, if, if I uh, would would say 
and understanding that art has to start from your ABC and that ABC will first start form that still form, that visual itself. So if you look at the first uh, ever still life that started, it started with a fruit basket, I, I don't know, in the time of Romans, because the only way you could build a community was around food and drink. Right? And this maybe was the first inspiration picture for all of us to write because you're not only looking at form, you're looking at texture, you're looking at light, you're looking at composition. And if I say that these were the visuals drawn from a banquet leftover, the formation of a banquet to the leftover of a banquet, it's very primitive. It's like a drawing has been back in the Egypt uh, caves or in the pharaohs. But if you look at it, it's very, very nascent. It's very, very uh, primitive in its uh, comparison today. You know, while if you look at how the culture of food community brought itself together, then you started showing off or display of food to impress and glorify the community and your presence in society and obviously uh, making food look good to impress your guests. So this was one of the earlier depictions of banquet uh, and its form where there's enough of nature, there is music, there is wine, there is drink, there is food. Uh, as, as you can rightly see, very, very earlier times. Yeah. So this is where I think and from this form is where everything started evolving. And obviously, uh, Vincent Van Gogh, the famous painter, took, took to depicting real life through his portraits. And he started doing food, which was not a very common subject. People were more common as a subject at that time. Mm. So if you can look at his texturing of a lemon, mm. And a vase. So these were when we photog photographers, artists moved from that medium to a digital medium or to a medium which is called photography, which became the next generation of a canvas, is when you started seeing the first change. Yeah. So I think so it is the Sanskrit or whatever we do today. Certainly, sir. Very, 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 very aptly uh, put. Because this is what, you know, this is how it moved to the next stage. Yes. yes. So, uh, tell us a little about how you achieve this in with the food. Because when we're looking at a painting and when an artist is painting uh, yeah. food, uh, especially when they are painting fruits and baskets and flowers and these still life uh, uh, objects, uh, they are trying to recreate what is actually there. So when we're looking at aspects of light or aspects of texture, how do you uh, bring it in, in the medium of food? Actually, when you're so, studying so, food. So one thing is, uh, let's understand the process of recreation. Recreation is simulating something. Right. In photography, the first act is capturing the reality. So it's already real there. One. Number two is every part of the story is born with light. Then, how you use light to depict that texture? So, if I just look at even a basic picture, and if you look at the right picture, it's just the reality of the fruit. It's the reality of that texture. And mm -hmm. the composition is exactly like what any artist would. There is no restriction to a background. There's no restriction to the light. There's no restriction to the lighting itself. So that is the creation of mind. And if you give the same subject to 10 students, all are going to portray it with 
their connectivity to that image you know and uh, that is the first aspect and when you create i don't think so anybody has a discipline to say that oh this will be my texture this will be my form but they have a loose connect to what they are trying to depict or the message so so for me above all is the story above all is the message and then if the message is strong of the story is correct then you build slowly into it so at at a very basic level we can take even a painting and give it a food form we did some work long long time ago about depicting the best india has ever painted portraits into another medium where food was a storyteller so this is chocolate sauce and bread and jam so just trying to say that how and this was rajma chawal kalonji and mirchi powder because artist was punjabi <laughs> the depiction of a thoughtful lady so all i'm trying to say is what and how is that story this is the story of the spices very famous and that complexity can be in bought through food so there is no restriction to your subject i gave this to somebody else he he will depict it separately but food is a strong medium for depiction because it's a close connect to your life you know and as i feel that it's also a reflection of the society in which we live the technology today without technology there is nothing else and the socio status of that economy or or that environment right the depiction of my food in war versus depiction of my food in joy will be totally different absolutely so it's it's very stunning if you look look at uh, desmond morris's book on man watching he saying when the economy is were the brightest the skirts were the shortest and when the women were at war they wore the longest gown because it's a sense of protection all right so so we have to encompass uh, our society we have to encompass what we are saying and how we are saying because we are saying the same thing mm. only our medium is changing our portrayal or today's version is changing and the way we are saying those stories are changing that that's all but we are saying the same thing it's the same naan roti paratha pizza burger true, right true. very true sir in yeah. fact that is what art is also all about you know yeah. uh, it's it's the voice of the society at a particular time at a given time so uh, the in societal influences the cultural uh, the nuances the political influences that are uh, present all of it comes together and this is how each person is interpreting it differently like you said very very rightly put sir very very nicely put and yeah. uh, this is where we are seeing that you know there is that cultural this thing like you say even when you are moving every 100 meters that you uh, travel in uh, india you see a different uh, you know a, a cuisine that comes to yes. you there, there could be some little difference in the way they are preparing the same dish there so, is no one recipe for dal there is no one recipe right. for curry or roti or paratha it's it's different and if if you see and if this we spoke about gothic art and then we spoke about classic and then we spoke renaissance and we spoke uh different kinds of to minimalism mm. and that, that's how and why did we come to minimalism because our life was crowded with too much and you wanted peace tranquility um depiction that less is more uh, th that kind of thing and with the same breath food has traveled Very true. Like, like if you look at this, this could have been shot maybe two years back, one year back, but its depiction is very much rooted 
in the way the farmer would have served his cheese to the way a seller would have had wine in the 18th century. The lady here is nothing but she's holding a Dalgona coffee, which is not, it's in the past, but it's become famous only four years back, five years back. Sure. But its depiction is showing that heritage. So it's so easy that every food sits in every heritage, right? Whatever that food is. But if you look at the buffet of the past to looking at minimalism today, is the same story spoken differently. And, and there is a stark, there's a stark because at that point in time, gluttony was not a bad habit. Today, gluttony is a bad habit. Greed is not a good virtue, right? So, and if you look at minimalism, and today, food from functionality has turned into art, and art is to be consumed by six senses on a chef's table, right? The umami of things, as they, as they, as they call it, uh, where you connect to his story of the creator and you read his joy through food. You know, so always a chef will come and stand and tell you his story, what was running in his mind, what was in the farm, how did his mother influence and how did his mentor influence his dish. And his creation came out of a, a purpose. You know, and that is more joyful to connect you to the dish rather than a small piece of food on a large plate. Right. You know? So, so and, you work with a lot of narratives, uh, Nitinji, uh, with, with uh, listening to different people's stories and then you try to incorporate that in the way you style it? So there is a principle that I use. It's called the five word or actually five word, not five line story. Mm -hmm. So if I come to meet you and you have a story to tell me of who, I will first compress the story. Then I will decipher the story into five lines. Mm -hmm. Then I will decipher the story into five words. And then my whole story around you will run around those five words. And because there is lots to be told in a picture. And that picture has to be pixel by pixel. So if you are not telling that story correctly and you have lots to say, it's going to be a mess. So among the five words, there will be the key word. So you have to be like that funnel throughout, percolate, see what is not required and it just sit with the core message. You know? That's so a, that's, that's how we lovely, work in Nari. That's a lovely thing to say. Nitinji, I think a lot of artists present here, that's a message for you all. Use that funnel and, you know, get away with what is not important so that you can focus on what really matters. Yes. Uh, that that's that's an important lesson difficult difficult but asked. difficult but true yeah true true uh, yeah. so uh, nitinji tell me do you also use certain tools like artists use a lot of tools i mean sometimes they are using a palette knife sometimes they are using a brush yeah. Yeah. a comb uh, i mean they use all kinds of things in order to you know kind of come up with the uh, image that they are uh, looking for that they themselves are primarily looking for uh, so, so tools? our tools are the same only the sizes are different Okay. Right from tweezers to brushes to palette knives to everything is the same. Techniques are identical. The medium is food. Sometimes the reality of food cannot take light or it will die. or So sometimes, not many times, you're, you're half preparing the food or uh, making the food behave in the way it, it is in. So that that is the same. Only thing is your red is poster red and my red may be a tomato or an apple. You know, and your green would be poster green and mine could be uh, lettuce or cabbage or asparagus. So uh, our palette is more defined. Right. Yeah. yeah, so there are there are lots of similarities as we see in both the creative fields, how they are they're literally uh, walking along. Yes, no, they literally. So, we take all, so, so for the longest, what I used to do, the longest, what I used to do, I still do it today. I don't refer food to food. Uh -huh. So, if somebody gives me a subject to de depict coffee in 2020, I have nothing to do with coffee. Uh -huh. 
as a subject, I understand a little bit of coffee. I understand it's a recipe. I understand it's, but it's portrayal to society is changing. So I'll be reading a Vogue magazine. I'll be going through fashion magazines of other kind. I'll be looking at the pulse of society with coffee. What is the engagement to say that story? So because you have to collaborate society with food, right? That, that slice of life is the story. The product is not the story. Product is the consumption, the experience. And that experience has to be shown right within the image. Right? Whether your plate was lying under the sun, whether it, you are eating at night. You know, that, that all has to come in that one story. So, you have to understand what's the society association with that food. And how would they want to see it? So, either you follow the norm or you break the norm. So, do you also see uh, some kind of a trend happening over here? Some kind of uh, hierarchy? Is, is there anything like that in uh, uh, styling food? Uh, colors, mm -hmm. forms, styles, expressions. Uh, uh, it's a world of community that trawls the net. And, and slowly, there is a language that gets built for every medium. Right? That is there. That is a lot of people, I, I mean, influence that space. So there is the color of the year, and then there is the texture on time, or is the format of time. So, so if I take you through that journey, and if you look at how food was first predicted to sell food to society, and it, it came out of still life, or it came out of graphic form, to this is how food was sold. And, and this, all of America bought. And the Campbell a poster, which is the most talked about poster in advertising, which was the first form of saying, look at my a variety of food that I sell to you, is spoken as the Sanskrit of food styling or uh, form, you know. And then if you see color came in, a lot of bright colors. Two, if you look at today, from that jump to today, and if you look, it is the same still life that you were speaking to me. Now, this still life lies between the arena of flat lays, which was something which the engineers would use to record gear parts and engineering parts. And we always saw food in three dimension either because you eat with a 45 degree angle. So you see food in a 45, 60 degree angle. But a lot of food in the 80s, 90s started becoming flat lays because it started telling you a very straight, simple story. Right? And modern still life became very graphic oriented. Very depictive, surreal, but at the same time, each person took a very different mantra. And most of that with the neo-artists, uh, America said, we will stand against everybody for a different language, whether it was food, whether it was art. And say, we will do, so if you went to people's houses, they never had uh, wood on the ceiling. There was wood on the ceiling. There were metal on the wall. So same way, those expressions started even coming to food. And specifically in the digital world, which we call in the internet world, the depiction became very realistic. And they also became very, very graphic. And back to a new way of expressing still life. You know, so we never saw food being depicted like that, but it became another alternate language. We are so used to seeing food either in its consumption, on the table, lying around, mess was never there. So time has gone up and down. Realism has come back. There is a trend where today's trust 
on food packaging is getting questioned or is largely questioned after COVID. So every person is saying, my food is real. I don't have preservative. So its depiction also again is back to, oh, my, when you eat my food, it will fall. The cookie will crumble rather than that perfect picture. And people have created different kind of art. And now food, I would say, is very much determined in what channel you are seeing. It. So a TV commercial will be realistic. Uh, Instagram will be candid. A uh, portrayal of its brand could be very artisanal. So it's the same brand talking to you in very different forms. And that's where food stories have become very, very dynamic. Very, very dynamic. This is not how you and me, even 20 years back, would have wanted to see our food. Right? If you go to any table in a Michelin star restaurant, the chef is only trying to get his farm onto the plate. Even his depiction. So cake crumbs will become the soil. In there will be a smoke, there will be a cloud, there will be an art form of a garden. Because we are slowly moving away from nature and we're moving to this technological digital world. And as we spoke about our still life, we are missing even our own garden. So we have moved away from that. And, and that uh, there's a whole world which has to say a new story to get you back. Right? And I, I very, if you look at how the Japs bring their culture in, and if you look at how Jap food is, their simplicity, their texturing, their colors, their forms, it's very rooted. It's very rooted like how the Indian cuisine is. But their depiction will be absolutely plain gin. And that starkness itself became a style. And if you look at now, digital has this as a still life style. Very hard eating, very simple, loud colors. Uh, who would ever thought that still would take this kind of form? Very minimalistic, but contrasts are very high. So if you study time, the time has made everything change and how the minimalism grew. And the French never wanted to use a loud color. They always were in pastels. It was America who and the US which was into loud colors. But now if you go and look at French food in the newer avatar, the macarons are ruby red, jade green, turquoise. We, these were colors never associated with food. So all that creativity is saying that now there are no boundaries. There are only stories. And each of us is entitled a language for himself. And that language is something which you have to believe and be proud of. You know, if you look at this still life, it has lots of the old era, right? It has lots of new form, forms which, which we didn't do. So the marriage between the old will and the new will never end. It's like our Lata Mangeshkar songs and Kishore Kumar songs. They will be there and you will find today's versions of it. So art with food, I, I think so, is going to follow the same story. And the digitalization of art. Because now there is another layer where technology, Photoshop, and now they speak about AI re, uh, generation. These are forms which I think so every artist has to accept. He has to bring it within his fold and he has to use the power of it rather than saying Ye mera, e to... you know 
So this, this is what I largely feel over a period of time. And these kind of images getting accepted because there is a generation who wants to see food in the way that they see their life. Yeah. Very true, very true, Nitinji. I like the way you have drawn a parallel. I mean, you've covered the entire gamut that is, uh, you know, it runs parallel with yes. us. Absolutely running parallel with that. I'm sure uh, the artists who are listening to you have uh, already kind of resonated with the way they look at their paintings and the way you have been talking about styling of food over the years and the changes involved. Uh, so as we uh, went through so much and we already, as I mean, not that we actually needed to establish a symbiosis because it was already there, yeah. but uh, it, it's still been substantiated a lot with this. And uh, I would like to know if anybody would have any questions, any uh, uh, so, so much of uh, knowledge that has been shared. Is there something that somebody would like to ask? I, I would like to throw it open to the participants. If someone has a question, please put it in the chat box or raise a hand. So I think nobody has any questions. Uh -huh. It's a very small, tight group. Yeah, but you've covered everything uh, so well. I, t I think even if there are questions, they are already answered. Quite sure there is more beautifully, to this. Thing. Beautifully uh, uh, gone through that entire journey. Uh, so as, as you were saying, we have uh, a lot of uh, still life that we see amongst our students. And uh, there are just one glimpse I would also like to share of what oh. we're showing in the exhibition. I'm not able to share that. Can you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can see. Yes, these are some of our artists uh, who have uh, who are showing the still life paintings in our current exhibition. Wow. As you saw, this is yes a very uh, elaborate this thing, but of course the medium is oil, so they play with the mediums over here. We have Especially another medium. Very nice. Now, this is a poster color that was an oil. So, the medium lends a lot of uh, play to the final depiction here. So nice. I mean, see, there is so much realism in this itself. The uh, fruit looks so alive, right? We don't have to work so hard. God is all gives us <laughs> that food gifted. <laughs> True. But that, that's that's the amazing part. I mean, each of us creates in a different manner, and that is the highlight of that particular field. As you know, you uh, so rightly uh, showed us, uh, even when it has traveled from so many eras or yes. even the cultural influences of the Japanese, of the French, of us Indians. Correct, correct. You know? and, and everything is very, very individualistic. Of course, it is changing uh, and very uh, influenced by the cultural nuances, but very, very ind individualistic. This is exactly what we respect even where the artists are concerned. Of course, of course. I mean, and each, I think so, art is so personal. It's Your, your depiction is so much connected to you. The creator becomes very, very important. Very true, sir. Extremely so. It influences, it inspires, it's it's there all along. I mean, both both the uh, mediums are such. I mean, even your food influences, your mood, 
the the way you plate the food the way it comes on the table we always talk of mixing colors where food is concerned uh, yeah. when serving don't serve everything of the same kind because you know there's it doesn't appeal to the eye it has to appeal to the eye first that's another thing that is similar where the art is concerned so when people uh, buy art we always tell them go by your aesthetic sense look what appeals to you because you got to live with it just as you know you put it on the plate and, and you also, have to eat it i feel also the expression has to right. connect with you and it has to sit in your environment right right huh? so rather than just buying for the price or buying for the label or it's something I feel you should be able to connect to that. True. So I think we've done a very uh, in-depth study with you. You've taken us long uh, route and uh, nuanced everything very, very clearly. No, thank you. Thank you so that. much. Thank you so much for that. It's really yeah. enriching talking to and you. And next we will catch in person. Uh, I think, yes, studio. certainly. I would, I would like to say, uh, where you say Amit ji loves Bika ji, <laughs> we should say <laughs> Adarshak loves Nitin ji. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> because uh, I will always remember that. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You and so I much. shall meet you and Lalit very, very soon. Thank you so much thank for having you. me over. Thank you. You are so you. beautiful. Pleasure. 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 Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.